There is no doubt that the ketogenic diet is good at burning fat, but what exactly is happening? I am going to give you the cliff notes so you can share how the keto diet works with your family and friends. And Keith is going to give the ridiculously expansive version because he was a chemistry major. All right, so a ketogenic diet is a very low carb diet that is high in fat. And so the question most people get is how do you lose weight when you're eating all of that fat? And if someone asks you that, the answer is insulin. Insulin is your fat storing hormone. When it is high, you're in fat storage mode. When it is low, you're able to pull fat out of storage and burn it. When we eat carbohydrates, insulin goes up. When we eat fat, it does not go up. So a ketogenic diet allows you to eat in a way that favors fat burning over fat storage. That was the cliff note version. I'm gonna now pick up my coffee and listen to Keith like the rest of you. That was very understandable, by the way. Good. Um, we'll see what you have to say about my, my rendition. Yeah, Maddie? Um, and by the way, I was requested to make the graphics for uh, my portion of the talk because um, it was a little bit worrisome that we might drive our video editor insane uh, trying to understand where I was going and get the appropriate graphics to put in there. Indeed. Can so. I mention that our video editor is our daughter? Yeah, there's more than, I mean, there's a lot on the line there. Yeah. <laughs> so, so let's start um, at the, the fat cells, the adipocytes, where our fat is stored. Um, don't want to go into a whole lot about how fat is stored because we're all very good at that. Yeah. Right? I mean, we got plenty in there. So our fat cells store the fat and they store the fat as triglycerides. And we've heard that term, right? So that is a glycerol molecule, which is kind of has three fingers to it. Uh, and each of those fingers has um, a fatty acid on it. Now, the, 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 the more appropriate or more correct term is, is TAG, which is triacylglyceride. So those fatty chains are, are considered as acyl groups and then the glyceride. So it's tri, three mm -hmm. acyl groups on a glyceride. So that's the way it's stored. So it, 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 comes, to, it comes in the bloodstream as, as a triglyceride. It's broken down because it has to go to a, through a small door into the cell. And it's reassembled in the cell as a triglyceride because it can, you can stack a lot of them in there that way. Mm -hmm. But in order to get them out, they have to go back through that small door. So they have to be broken down. They've got to peel those fatty acids off of that glycerol backbone in order to get them out. So the main thing that does that is something in the cell called hormone sensitive lipase. And lipase means that it breaks down fat. Um, there are some other lipases in the cell as well, but hormone sensitive lipase is kind of a slow acting lipase. So it's the rate limiting factor. Once it does a thing, the other ones like, you know, they quickly do their thing, but it all depends on hormone sensitive lipase. Uh, and that is, as the name suggests, it's activated by hormones, epinephrine, other catecholamines. But the big thing is that the main inhibitor of hormone sensitive lipase is insulin, mm -hmm. as you had uh, referred to. Mm -hmm. So if insulin is high, hormone sensitive lipase is not going to be activated. We can't get that fat out, yep. right? So if we get our insulin low enough, we activate that lipase, we break those things down, they go out into the bloodstream. The glycerol backbone, goes right to the liver. The liver is the only tissue that can utilize that. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. The free fatty acids actually bind to albumin in the bloodstream so they can be carried throughout the body. And almost every cell can use free fatty acids for energy. Um, the, uh, uh, the exceptions to that are the brain um, and red blood cells because they don't have mitochondria, right? So, what happens is the free fatty acids that are brought into the cells and they combine with CoA through some enzymatic procedures and they, that makes acyl-CoA. And we, we talked about it. acyl is the, is the fatty acid chain. And CoA is, is, a, is a molecule that's very important in metabolism. Um, so another thing we've talked about in other videos is carnitine, right? Mm -hmm. So at this point, you've got acyl-CoA inside the cell, but it's outside of the mitochondria. And there are these molecules called carnitine transferases, and there's some different, there's palmito, palmito transferase and acyl transferase and all these, but carnitine transferases in general will bond to that acyl-CoA 
and they move it through the membranes of the mitochondria to get it into the inner part of that mitochondria. Mm -hmm. And they, they leave it there, and then they, they go back outside so they can pick up more, mm -hmm. bring it back in, and leave it there. So the acyl-CoA now is a long fatty acid with a CoA on it, uh, and through beta oxidation within the mitochondria, it is broken down into two carbon units, mm -hmm. and that is called acetyl-CoA. Mm -hmm. And if you remember anything from high school, college biology, acetyl-CoA acetyl is like that starting point mm -hmm. of the Krebs cycle. Yeah. I just want to say that I drew a nice really color diagram here of the Krebs cycle with mm -hmm. some of the things in there. So acetyl-CoA comes down into the Krebs cycle it's converted to citrate, it goes around the whole thing. We create water, we create, you know, uh, we've got the electron transport chain, so we've got NAD, you know, NAD, NADH, you know, all this stuff coming on, CO2. But the main product through that whole cycle, it gets to oxaloacetate right before at the top of the thing, and we produce that ATP. Mm -hmm. And that's that energy that our body needs. So that, those free fatty acids come in and they are just feeding that energy cycle. And remember that, that fatty acids, gram for gram, have more than twice the energy that carbohydrates and protein mm -hmm. do. I mean, they're very good, right. very good source of energy. Mm -hmm. So that's what's happening in all the other cells with the yeah. free fatty acids we've released because our insulin is low. Okay. So in the liver, um, so when our insulin is low, obviously our glucose is low, right? So that stimulates gluconeogenesis. Our bodies do need some glucose. Mm -hmm. We can't be like zero glucose. Mm -hmm. Um, so the liver starts this process called gluconeogenesis, which is making glucose, new glucose, out of things that aren't glucose, right? Um, so that would be, you know, fatty acids, fatty acids proteins, you know, you know, whatever you can, whatever you can get in there, right? So from oxaloacetate, which is part of that Krebs cycle, and glycerol, which we took out of the fat cell initially, the liver is turning those into glucose. Now, without the oxaloacetate, we're not running that Krebs cycle in those liver cells. So uh, the acetyl-CoA starts to build up, and that's what goes into the process of making the ketones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the three ketones are acetoacetate, beta-hydroxybutyrate, and then acetone is, is kind of the byproduct breakdown of both of those that we breathe out. Um, so that brings us to kind of the... the bring it all the way around to the end, right? So insulin, again, is the key. Mm -hmm. um, when it's increased, it halts the action of hormone-sensitive lipase in the fat cells. Mm -hmm. So we can't even release the fat yeah. into the blood cell. And we talk about being on a ketogenic diet. So the presence of ketones, and this is why, this is why I like to measure ketones. I think this is why it, it's, it's one of those things that, that kind of, you know, stratifies, you know, what you're doing. The presence of ketones means that you are burning fat, liberating fat, and it's being brought to the liver for that process. Mm -hmm. So being in ketosis, you know that you are burning fat. Yeah. And that is kind of the, you know, so, so insulin, you know, and, I, and I'll be honest, I step, I skip like dozens of little ends. I made no, processes in there. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, low insulin, get your ketones up, you know you're burning fat then. Yep. So just keep at it. Yeah. Right? That was very well done. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I hope uh, you feel the same way. Uh, hey, thanks so much for watching. I'm just going to call it there. Do you have anything else? I'm just going to call oh, it. Oh, God, no. All right. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks for watching. Uh, low carb, high fat. All right. See you next week. Thanks.